Well, March Madness is finally over, and after that wild ride, I don't think anybody could have possibly seen all of that craziness coming. Even for typical March Madness standards, this season's tournament was a wild up and down situation, with upsets happening left and right, and along the way we also got a closer look at a few of the top prospects in this year's draft class, which is why it's time to deliver another installment of our monthly mock draft series. Some prospects solidified themselves as top picks, while others left a lot to be desired, and today we're going to dive into all of that. The order that the teams will be picking today will also be based on the current NBA standings. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. To start things off with the first pick in the draft, the Detroit Pistons select Victor Wembenyama from France. This should come as no surprise to any of you because Wembenyama has been the highly sought after top prospect in this class all season long. It doesn't matter which team lands the top pick, Wembenyama will be the first player off the board this year, and for the Pistons, who have been at the bottom of the standings pretty much all season long, this could kickstart the next phase of their rebuild as they may be ready to take a step forward if they get to add him. Next, with the second pick, the Houston Rockets select Scoot Henderson from G League Ignite. The top of this year's draft is incredibly strong because Scoot Henderson is probably good enough to have gone number one overall in a few recent drafts prior to this one, he just happens to be behind Wembenyama, who many view as one of the best prospects ever. The Rockets are in search of a true lead guard because the Kevin Porter Jr. experiment at point guard hasn't quite gone as well as planned, and Henderson can easily step into to that role while also providing an explosive partner to Jalen Green in the backcourt. Next, with the third pick, the San Antonio Spurs select Eamon Thompson from Overtime Elite. This is the first changeup from prior mock drafts, as this is the earliest I've had Eamon projected to be picked yet, and amongst the variety of reasons for it, I honestly just really like this fit with the Spurs, compared to other teams picking in this range. They have very solid two-way wing players in Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell already, so adding Thompson at point guard with his size natural playmaking instincts, and out-of-this-world athleticism, it would give this team a very strong core to build around moving forward. Up next with the fourth pick, the Charlotte Hornets select Brandon Miller from Alabama. Miller entered March Madness red hot as a prospect, putting himself in the top three conversation, but then he had what can only be described as a disappointing showing in the tournament, and that momentum has now slowed down. Miller's inclusion in an incident off the court also didn't help much, but realistically, he's still one of the best two-way wings in the draft, with very valuable shooting prowess, and for a Hornets team in need of wing talent, they will happily snag him at this spot. Next, with the fifth pick, the Portland Trailblazers select Cam Whitmore from Villanova. Villanova didn't make the tournament this year, so we didn't get to see Whitmore in action, but overall, he had a very strong freshman season where he got better and better as the season progressed. He's a big-bodied wing player that has a ton of power around the rim, his three-point shooting trended upward after a slow start to the season, and he finished strong in that regard, and defensively, he's very capable and versatile, which is exactly what the Trailblazers need right now. Up next, with the sixth pick, the Indiana Pacers select Asar Thompson from Overtime Elite. Asar is the twin brother of Eamon, and he's actually the one who took home the Overtime Elite MVP award this season. He, like his brother, is a superb athlete that plays more of the shooting guard role while his brother plays point guard, and Asar has more overall scoring upside offensively. Getting him out in transition is when he's at his best, and playing in the up-tempo offense in Indiana, alongside Tyrese Halliburton, is a match made in heaven for him. Next, with the seventh pick, the Washington Wizards select Jairus Walker from Houston. Walker's one-seeded Houston team lost in the Sweet 16, and Walker himself didn't have the best shooting performance in that game, but I don't think that will hamper his draft stock too much, because his value at the next level comes in so many other ways. Yes, as a forward, he's got a smooth shooting stroke, but defensively, he is incredibly versatile, with a 7-foot 2-inch wingspan, and if there's one one thing the Wizards need more help with, it's defense. 
Next, with the eighth pick, the Orlando Magic, select Anthony Black from Arkansas. Black is a very easy prospect to fall in love with because of how he views the game, his feel for the game, his size as a point forward type of player, and his versatility. He reads the game well, he knows where to be and how to get there, and he makes plays happen. The one thing that would make some hesitant about him would be the fact that he's not the most athletic player compared to others in this range, and his shooting comes and goes, but I think players that are as smart as Black is tend to pan out in the NBA more often than not. Up next with the ninth pick, the Utah Jazz, select Grady Dick from Kansas. Grady may be the best shooter in the draft this year, and it's not just as a spot-up shooter. He still had the ups and downs that most college freshmen experience, but when he was on, he was showing off shot making off the dribble, creating space that NBA teams will definitely value, especially from a 6'8 wing player. Next up with the 10th pick, the Dallas Mavericks select Nick Smith Jr. from Arkansas. Early on in the season, Smith was viewed as a top 5 talent in this class, but his year was riddled with injuries and inconsistencies, so we didn't always get to see him at his best. I said in my last mock draft that March Madness was his chance to prove that he was still that caliber of talent, and to put it simply, Smith had a rough go of it in the tournament. I still think his upside and talent is worth a lottery pick though, and for the Mavericks, who are a team that didn't want to see themselves picking in the lottery in general, they're going to swing for the highest upside prospect available when they land here, which Smith definitely should be. Next, with the 11th pick, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Taylor Hendricks from UCF. Hendricks is another top prospect on a team that unfortunately did not qualify for March Madness, so he didn't get to show out on the big stage, but there's a lot to like about his game. Hendricks is a three-level scorer at 6'9", and has a lengthy wingspan to add to it. He creates havoc defensively, and he knows how to get to his spots, so his size and natural talent fits the mold of the kind of prospect that the Thunder have been drafting recently. Up next, with the 12th pick, the Orlando Magic, who owned the Bulls pick, select Keontae George from Baylor. George is one of the more appealing volume scoring talents in the draft this year with a smooth offensive repertoire and a confident ability to create off the dribble and knock down tough shots. Some concern may arise over his subpar efficiency numbers, but the talent is there to develop for a year or two at least. Next, with the 13th pick, the Utah Jazz, who own the Timberwolves pick, select Jordan Hawkins from University of Connecticut. Hawkins led his Connecticut team all the way to the title this year and absolutely turned a lot of heads along the way. He's a big time shot maker who can catch fire from three and put teams away in a hurry, and at the next level, that translates as a nice spark plug off the bench for a team's sixth man role to electrify the second unit. And finally, with the last pick in the lottery, the Toronto Raptors select Kaysen Wallace from Kentucky. The Raptors could be losing both Fred Van Vliet and Gary Trent to free agency this summer, so they're going to need backcourt replenishment, and Wallace is a tough guard that plays hard on both ends of the floor, and that's the kind of player that Nick Nurse loves to have. He's a streaky shooter, but he's a smart playmaker and a gritty defender, and in Toronto, that's how you earn minutes early on in your career. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who you want your favorite team to draft this year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.